Good day there, once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, coming to you guys with some more Planet Side 2 content. Today guys, we're going to be making a return to the Quartermasters Overview series to take a look at another selection of weaponry. Only this time, we're going to be changing colours from my brothers in arms in the new conglomerate to take a look at the assault rifles available to the mighty Terran Republic. As always guys, you can vote on what weapon category and faction you would like to see us cover in the next episode by using the link in the description down below. Keeping in mind that Araxium weapons and Nanite Systems weapons are not going to be put under the magnifying glass in this series currently. Anyway, formalities out of the way, let's dive straight into the arsenal of Terran Republic Assault Rifles. The T1 Cycler here is our starter point and is the standard issue assault rifle available to new enlistments in the combat medic division of the Terran Republic, and for good reason. This is a well-rounded, well-oiled, balanced workhorse that can retain accuracy out to a medium distance, even under longer bursts, but at the same time, sports a rate of fire that makes it a true competitor in close quarters engagements. Now, the weapon does feature a weaker damage output than what the NC competitors provide, but it does also sport a generous 4 year magazine size that allows TR combat medics to defend themselves from multiple threats as needed. Just be prepared for a slightly longer reload time to come as a result of the larger and heavier magazines. With all that said, this is a trusty companion on the front lines of combat for many a TR troop and will continue to serve soldiers for a long time to come. The T1S Cycler is, much like all of the other S variants of weapons we've covered recently, a variant that focuses on adaptability and customizability. The weapon sports a slightly slower fire rate, but for the remainder of the actual important stats, things are pretty much identical across the board here, so should you put your well earned certs into such a weapon? Well, it does come with a larger suite of attachment options that include things like the underbarrel grenade launchers and shotguns, the compensator and different types of ammunition. The result is a platform that can evolve as the battle does, as long as you're willing to sacrifice some outright damage output. It's certainly a weapon that is well worth considering for those who are looking for a more modular jack of all trades equivalent of the T1 Cycler, but it's not exactly something I would call special or a must own, just a stepping point for those who are looking for it. Okay, so let's step towards a bit more of an extreme, shall we? The two previous assault rifles we've covered so far, they're pretty solid examples of workhorse rifles that tilt a little bit, just a little bit, towards the TR flavour of weapons. The TAR and the Cycler TRV go the whole nine yards. These rifles double down on rate of fire and general effectiveness in close quarters environments with the intent of being excellent choices for the more aggressive combat medic. The TAR brings its rate of fire up to a tantalising 800 rounds per minute, while maintaining the full 40 round magazine size, giving it some serious capabilities in engaging multiple CQC threats with ease. The party piece, however, of the TAR is its mobility, sporting the best in class hipfire accuracy and aiming down sights movement speed. The hipfire out of the box is already incredible, and when you go ahead and slap an advanced laser sight on the weapon, you're looking at a hipfire accuracy that competes comfortably with that of SMGs, which quite frankly is a category that SMGs are normally in a league of their own with, so that's pretty neat. Now, the Cycler TRV, on the other hand, takes the rate of fire and continues to push the boundaries in the department by dropping a wild 845 rounds per minute downrange. Now, to give you an idea of how fast that is, you'll clear out the entire 40 round mag in just under three seconds. Now you take all that and combine it with the fact that it's also loaded with the 143 damage model, the same as the previous three weapons we've just discussed, this makes it the deadliest AR in the arsenal for raw CQC damage output. There's no denying how powerful the AR is if you can control the intense recoil and clumsy reload procedure that you'll face with it. Seriously, we're looking at the worst in class in both aspects here. But in the hands of a skilled operator, this is a favourite pick among a TR combat medics who can operate in shock troop missions. Both weapons are very capable at CQC combat. The question is whether you prefer to double down on rate of fire or bring a more mobile platform to the table. 
The Sabre 13 here is on the completely opposite end of the scale when you compare it to the likes of the TAR and the Cycler TRV. This two round burst assault rifle is the only one in the TR lineup that supports the 167 damage model, making it the most powerful when it comes to damage per shot. But when you combine that with the incredibly controllable recoil pattern, you have a recipe for a weapon that is extremely capable in long range combat. The weapon sports unique recoil management mechanics that allows it to throw down accurate, consistent fire, but that is dependent on your skill as a shooter. Sloppy aim here will get you nowhere, and good crosshair placement is important to ensure that what you lose in rate of fire, you make up for in damaging shots. Treat this weapon with respect, and it will promptly reward you in turn. Also, don't be afraid to engage moving targets at range. The muzzle velocity here is very agreeable and makes things easy when it comes to leading your shots. The Talk 9 is an interesting beast that sort of finds itself in a weird middle ground. It sports the fastest rate of fire in the class, which suggests that it is designed for CQC dominance on another level. But that ain't entirely the case here. The weapon actually doubles down on versatility and accuracy by making use of a lighter, weaker caliber of round that brings the recoil down by a significant margin. It is in fact the weapon that fires the weakest damage per round output when compared against the rest of the TR assault rifle arsenal bar one, so don't expect to drop targets in record speed here. With the lighter recoil, we also see a very agreeable reload speed and higher end muzzle velocity, giving it the uptime to keep on kicking in close quarters combat, and even reach out to touch those pesky threats at range all the while. The result is an assault rifle that is capable of hosing down a lot of ammo in a short time frame, all the while doing it very accurately, even under a longer burst. It's a great choice for TR combat medics who want to be somewhat prepared for literally anything that comes their way, all the while keeping rate of fire high on the priority list. Many will swear by this weapon just for its adaptability alone. The T1B Cycler is the second of three burst fire ARs available to the TR, and fits the bill of being the quote unquote middle of the ground option in the burst fire rifle category here. Sporting a three round burst with an average damage model, the T1B is fit for those looking for a standard cycler who prefer the weapon itself to do the heavy lifting when it comes to trigger discipline. Sporting an almost identical platform across the board with some slight adjustments to the recoil pattern to allow for more accurate fire, it's a weapon that won't do you wrong in close to medium range engagements. Just like the Sabre, you need to spend a little bit more time making your shots count to make up for the lost rate of fire that comes from a burst fire platform. Ah, the MGA-1 Arbalest, the latest concoction to have emerged from the TR think tank when it comes to weapons engineering, and is the last, and probably the strangest of the burst fire rifle collection on Araxis right now across all three factions. While most burst fire weapons trade rate of fire for accuracy, the Arbalest brings about a unique six round firing burst and a strangely shaky recoil pattern that sort of pushes the weapon towards a CQC emphasis, despite its burst fire mode. The issue that many take with the weapon, however, is the fact that in CQC engagements, most users would prefer to use CQC weapons that are fully automatic to stay ready for those more aggressive engagements. Combine that with the fact that the weapon fires a weak around, akin to what you would find on the Torque 9, and you have a pretty confused weapon as it is. It's a fun weapon to use as a challenge, but is certainly far from a popular pick right now, and may require some more perfecting in the labs before TR soldiers consider this a must own. But anyway folks, with all that said, that's going to conclude today's episode of the Quartermasters Overview. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It's been a pleasure covering the TR Assault Rifles. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favourite TR Assault Rifle is in the game right now, and if you've got any tips for using it, be sure to share those as well. As always guys, if you enjoyed today's video, backing in the like button would be greatly appreciated, and if you're new to the channel, consider backing in the subscribe button whilst you're at it. If you're a long time supporter, and you continue to enjoy the content, consider using that join button to support the channel monetarily it goes a long way as well as always my social media links are in the description down below and i hope you guys enjoy the video once again peace out and i will see you guys all in the next one take care guys have a good one